Great, in this interview, I'm going to start off by asking you some general questions, and then after that I'll pose you a couple of physical scenarios and ask you to analyse them. So, can we start by answering this? Um, can you tell me whether you've heard about something or read about something which has made you excited about wanting to study physics? Um, certainly. Recently I read um, Schrodinger's Cat and Schrodinger's Kittens by John Gribben, oh, yes. and that focuses on the quantum mechanical side of uh, physics. And in the, the brief um, beginning bit before it kind of went into the quantum mechanical treatment, it talked about the wave particle um, duality of light and electrons. Can you give me an example of a situation where an electron behaves sometimes as a wave and sometimes as a particle? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, if you look at double slit interference experiment, where you have your screen with two slits and a light source, or an electron source, um, and then a, a screen. If you look at the intensity pattern on the screen, when you've got both your your slits open, you have a what you'd expect if you had two waves interfering to give you um, constructive and destructive interference patterns. Oh, yes. But if you were to cover one of the slits up and look at the intensity pattern, you would just get um, a normal Gaussian distribution, as you expect if you're just throwing particles through the hole. I see. Um, that's the intensity you'd get, whereas if it were a wave, it would look completely different. Okay, very good. Now, can you imagine that you're at the seaside and you've got a bucket and spade? Um, and what I want you to do is to estimate how many grains of sand you could fill the bucket with. Uh, you might want to use the whiteboard to answer the question. Okay, um, so if you have your bucket um, filled with grains of sand, you could, get, uh, you could work out the volume of your bucket by filling it with water and then putting it into a container um, with a measuring scale on the side. Um, and that would give you a volume of the bucket. And then you could work out the volume, you could work out an average volume for your grains of sand. Um, but obviously you can do all of them, you have to take an average of 20 or so and then you could work out um, how many grains of sand are in there by dividing one volume by the other. How big do you think a grain of sand is? Not big enough to get an accurate reading, actually you think your errors would be very big. Um, there, yeah. Maybe you can just make an estimate of the grain of sand and we can just see if we can get some rough... Estimate of a grain of sand? Yeah. Um, say... A millimetre by a millimetre by a millimetre. Um, so it would give you a volume of 10 to the minus 9 metres per grain of sand. Um, and then obviously if you knew the volume of your bucket, the number of grains of sand would be equal to um, the volume of the bucket divided by the volume of one grain of sand. And what assumption are you making when you write that down about the way in which the sand particles are contained in the bucket? Oh, uh, you're assuming that actually it's there's no air in the bucket, but the sand takes up the whole of the space of the bucket. That's right. Um, so you'd have to you'd have to factor in um, air. If you took the sand to be roughly spherical, so that they sat like that in the bucket, you could work out possibly an estimate for actually how much air you've got in the bucket and then factor that, take that volume um, air and take that away from that. Okay, so why don't you just um, make a rough estimate of the size of a typical bucket and yeah. um, tell me what you think about the volume, how much the volume of air might be and just put in the numbers and see what you get. Okay, so we say, so let's get rid of some of this for a bit. Um, instead of saying our grains of sand are square, let's quickly just say they're a millimeter um, by a millimeter by a millimeter. Um, sorry, not square. Let's say they're circular um, with a radius of a millimetre, um, then your volume is four thirds pi r cubed. Good. So it'd be four thirds pi times ten to the minus nine. Um, and then for your bucket, if we say it's, I don't know, um, 20 centimetres across, mm -hmm. 
um, twenty. Let's make it a square bucket um, for ease of use. And that way, then you're looking at um, volume of your bucket. So be equal to eight times ten to the minus six. Um, and then the volume of air. If we say we've got that, then we to try and work out the S there, and there would be, I would say for each four of those is maybe one of those. So if we say the volume of air is approximately a quarter of um, the volume of the sand. So you could have the total volume is equal to four times the volume of the sand plus um, well, sorry, it's the volume of sand plus the volume of air. If we say the volume of the sand is equal to four times the volume of the air, then our total volume would equal, be equal to four times. Yes, it would be equal to um, five quarters of the volume of the sand. What's important for the interviewers is to see that the candidate is able to think through a problem using the, the basic principles that they've learnt of their subject. What we, what we don't, um, what we're not so impressed with is when the candidates are simply regurgitating a, a solution that they've learnt before at school and being trained to solve. So it'd be equal to 32 fifths. Um, times 10 to the minus 9 divided by the volume for one grain which is this 4 thirds pi times 10 to the minus 9 um, would give you your value. Well thank you very much Craig for coming on. Thank you. We choose the questions that we ask at interview to try to get information on uh, the selection criteria that we're using to admit the students. Uh, now, all subjects have selection criteria, and some of the criteria are the same for all subjects, but some of the criteria are subject-specific. For physics, for example, the se selection criteria are motivation, mathematical ability, reasoning ability, physical intuition, and communication. So in the case of Craig's interview that you've just seen, uh, the first question I asked was designed to test motivation, so he was explaining about a book that he'd read outside of school. Uh, the second question I asked was designed to test um, reasoning ability and physical intuition, whether he could think of a way of solving the problem, perhaps using techniques that he wasn't familiar with before. In the case of the general question, he showed that he'd read uh, around his subject, he'd read a book by John Grubin, and he was able to talk about and, and explain about what was in that book. So I, I thought that that showed that he, he was motivated to study physics. In the case of the second question, uh, he started off quite well, um, set up the problem quite well. I had to prompt him a little bit about uh, what to do in terms of the size of the sand grains and how they, how they packed together inside the bucket, and he made a few numer numerical errors, but he was able to take prompts quite well, and uh, he was able to show that he, could, he had a good feeling for the mathematics of the problem.